So the concept that we are going to discuss today is conversion tracking. First of all, before we talk about tracking the conversion, we need to understand the meaning of conversion. So what exactly is a conversion? When a customer does some activity on your website, that can be a conversion. For me, a sale can be a conversion. For you, downloading a brochure can be a conversion. For someone else, filling up the form can be a conversion. For someone else, just calling on their phone itself is a conversion. So what you feel is a conversion that can be tracked. So an activity that the user performs after visiting your website. Let us say conversion tracking is a free tool. It will give you a gist of what is the customer doing on your website. After customer interacts with your ads and when they enter your, for example, let us say there is one client ABC Another client XYZ is there. For this client, purchasing is a conversion. If a sale happens, it is a conversion for him. Let us say for this client XYZ, if someone fills up a form, fill up a form itself is a conversion because he knows how to handle later. If someone fills up the form, you have the contact details, you call up them, you pester them with your email IDs, whatever it is, you know how to make a conversion out of it. So for him, only fill up the form is enough. For him, maybe sale is required. Whatever it is, what is the process? The user clicks on the ad. After clicking on the ad, he enters the website. After he enters the website, he'll go to the product page. Or maybe directly he clicked on the product in the ad itself. If our landing page URL is the page of the product, he'll click on that and he'll directly come to the page. And he'll select that product and put it on the cart. After adding it to the cart, he'll go to the payment page. After the payment is completed, where will he go? He'll go to the thank you page, isn't it? A confirmation page will be there. You call it a final page of transaction or thank you page of the transaction. Lot many times you might be observing on e-commerce platforms like Amazon, etc. You will add a product to the cart. You'll keep it in the cart for a few days. And then on some other day, you'll be purchasing it. As long as it is still in the cart, it is not a conversion. Right. Whenever you complete the payment and whenever you reach the last page of the transaction, then only you can term it as a conversion. Similarly, if filling up the form is my requirement, user will enter my website, he'll go to the contact us page, he'll open the form, and after opening the form, he'll fill up all the details and click on submit. If you click on submit, what will he see? Probably another page or another URL or maybe a thank you message. So that last page which the user visits after finishing up the filling of the form, that stage is known as conversion. As long as the user is not hitting the submit button, conversion is not completed. Am I right? Yes. So when is the conversion completed? When the activity is finished by the user, whether it is a form filler, whether it is a download brochure, whether it is a call, whether it is a connectivity on the WhatsApp, or whether it is some sale or any purchase, any inquiry, whatever it is. Unless and until the customer finishes off the process, you don't call it a conversion. And as long as the user is on any other page, you can track them with global site tag. Do you know global site tag, which we already discussed? Google Ads tag. So we can use it not only for remarketing, we can also use it to track the customers. What happens the minute the user enters my website, because of the presence of global site tag, a cookie is installed on his browser. So as long as the customer is on any other page, there is only one cookie. What we will do here, on the final page of our transaction, we will add another code. On the final page of our transaction, we will add another code. With this code, a second cookie is installed on the user's browser. If any user has got two cookies, what does it mean? It means conversion is completed. He entered the website and also completed the process of purchasing. Unless and until he don't come to the last page, there won't be a second cookie installed because this code is present on the page level. The second code that we are talking about, we are going to add it on the page level. On which page you should add it? Thank you page. Or we can say last page of your conversion. 
So on the last page, we are going to put up this code and this code is called event snippet code. So these are the two codes that we need to have on our website. One is global site tag. Global site tag is added on the header or footer of our website. So whichever page the user comes, he will be trackable. And this event snippet code is added on the page level. Which page? On the last page or on the target page of conversion. Simply putting a thank you page. Now, let us say I have a website. I have home page, about us page, service one page, service two page and contact us page. And on contact us page, I have an inquiry form. And my conversion is someone should come to my website and fill up this form. So what are the two codes that I'm adding on my website? Global site tag, global and, site tag and event snippet code. Where should I add the global site tag? Hello, Header or Header and or the website. website. So it will be present on all pages. And where will I add my event snippet code? Last the last page that is in the contact form. In the last page that is thank you page, whatever is there. In the thank you page, I'm going to add the event snippet code. Now let us say user one has entered my website. The minute he enters my website, what happens? A cookie is installed, cookie number one is installed on his browser because he entered my website, which is having this global site tag. He goes to any service page. He roams around my website, but he did not fill up the form. Is it a conversion? No. no. If he fills up the form and goes up to the thank you page, what happens now? A second cookie is installed on his browser because he finished filling up and he reached the thank you page. So I can have a track that Someone has completed one conversion. Got it, ma? That is the process of tracking your conversion. So how to create this course? On your Google Ads account, tools and settings, under measurement, you'll have something called conversions. Let me show you on the account level. So this is my Google Ads account. Tools and settings, under measurement, you'll have conversions. So get into conversions. And it will ask you, what do you want to track? For what you want to create a tracking code? Can you see here new conversion action? These are already some conversion tracking that I have created. Okay. You can see all your target conversions here. I can create one conversion for sale, one for form fill up, one for calls, one for app. Like that I can create multiple conversion actions. I'm creating a new one create a new conversion action, it asks you, what do you want to track? Let us say you want to track app performance. We'll talk about it in the next class. That is app promotion campaign. There we'll talk. If you want to track phone, phone calls, you will add your phone number here. If it is a website tracking, what, do, what all the things that you can track from a website? You can track sales. You can track people clicking on any links. You can track people viewing any pages or you can track any form fill-ups, any sign-ups. So I'm taking website conversion right now. The minute I take that, it will ask to give me my website domain so that it can check if already any code is running in my website. So I need to give my live URL of the website. Click on scan. It will check if any codes are already present. If nothing is there, you can go ahead and Create a conversion manually. Every time I am saying this again and again, go for manual code creation. All right. Add a conversion action manually. And what is the activity that you want to do? Is it sales that you want to uh, track or is it leads that you want to track? For example, if it is sale, what do you want to track? Do you want to track purchases? Do you want to just track number of people adding to the cart or you want to track who has begin the checkout, all these things. So if you want to track begin checkout, your conversion code, that is event snippet code, must be present on the checkout page. Let us say you want to track number of subscriptions. Your conversion tracking code will be present on the subscribe page. So wherever, whatever you want to track, you'll select that. What is the goal? Or you want to track any lead submission form, any appointment form, any sign up form, any request code, whatever page view also can be checked. 
So let us say I want to track my contact form. All the people who have filled up my contact form, I need to track them. After this, you'll have some options like add contacts to afford this. You want to make this a default goal. If you want, you can make it, not mandatory. Give a name for your conversion action. This is one concept of adding value. Let us say you are doing it for sales. For every sale, how much are you earning? If you want to mention that, you can mention and you can track that also, how much you are earning from this. For example, you can say, use same value for each conversion. Hare conversion pay, I got 100 rupees, let us say. I can put it as 100. And whenever I'm having a sale, Google Ads will start calculating. You got 100 rupees benefit. You got 200 rupees benefit. After 10 sales, I'll get 1,000 rupees. So like that, if you want to give value for your sale, you can mention it. Let us say if it is for form fill up, this is not required for me because if people fill up the form, I'm not going to make any monetary benefit, of course. I'll keep it. Don't use a value. It is your choice according to your requirement. And then count. Very important thing. Count is how do you want to calculate the conversions? I'll give you one small example. Let us say you are selecting a bidding strategy, CPA. What is CPA? Cost per action. What does it mean? Some action should be done by the customer. Then only you're going to pay money for the Google. Let us say I decided to pay on CPA basis and I'm starting the campaign. Now, a single user visited my website and he purchased four products. How many conversions happened? Four, four conversions happened. And I'm going to pay four times to Google. When, if I make the count as every. So every purchase is considered as one conversion. I can keep it as one. What does it mean? Even if the customer purchases 100 products, it is only one conversion. I'm calculating on the basis of the customer. So here, for example, if you are doing it for forms and all, sometimes people will give wrong information. And again, they might fill up second time, third time. If people are filling up the same form three or four times and you are paying for CPA, cost per action, for wrong fill-ups also, you will be paying money to Google. To avoid that kind of thing, it is better to go for one more. So even if the user does 10 different conversions on your website, still you will be paying only once. So how do you want to calculate? Do you want to count every conversion or you want to count one conversion per user? That is what you will select here. Understood the meaning of count? Online people, am I clear? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Right. So moving ahead, how long should your cookie be active? If the user is coming from search ad, see, a lot of times this happens. Let us say your user selected the product, he put it on the cart, but he did not finish the purchase today. Maybe tomorrow, day after tomorrow, or whenever he has time and money, Whenever he is in a mood to purchase the product, then he'll do that. Then so long this conversion can't stay online, right? You need to track it. So you can keep the conversion active for many days. The code, the cookie must be active on the browser for a few days. So if the user is coming from your search ad, if he's clicking on the search ad and entering your dash, I mean your payment page, you can keep the cookie active from one week to 90 days. Any days in between, one week to 90 days. You can maximum keep it active up to 90 days. That is up to three months you can track. If the person purchases the product after three months, we can't do it. Similarly, if the user comes through a video engagement, if the user clicks on a video ad and then enters your website, you can keep the cookie active for up to 30 days. So it will be one day to 30 days. Or if it is through a display ad, it also ranges from one day to 30 days. So simply putting up, if the user comes to your website through a view through window or a engaged through window, that is through display ad or a video ad, you can keep the cookie active from one day to 30 days. And if it is anything else, that is a search ad, then you can keep the cookie active from one day to 90 days. So these are all the options. And then you can click on done and that conversion action will be saved. If I don't want it, I can end it here. Let me give a name for it and I'll save it. 
I'm keeping it as contact, contact for 5 p.m. That is because I don't know if I have already created that or not. Done. So I have created one conversion action. After clicking conversion action, you can see this is the one I have created. If I want to see the settings and change it at any point of time, I can get into that. Save and continue. This is the global site tab for this conversion. Copy the global site tag. Where should I put it? Header or footer of the website because I want to track all the customers who are entering my website. And I have something called event snippet code. Can you see here? Event snippet. So this is the code. Copy the code. And where should I put it? On the thank you page or on the last page of my transaction. You already know how to add it on the website level. Header or footer. Let me show you how to add it on the page level. So go to your dashboard. After getting into the dashboard, go to the respective page on which page you want to add the code. I'm on all pages. I don't have any thank you page, but if at all you have a thank you page, you will get into that page. Right now, just now I'm taking this just to show you as an example. I've selected one page. Get into the Elementor. After entering the Elementor, for example, I want to add a code here. Select the block and add a text block in that text editor. Put the text editor here. Can you see something called visual here? It will be by default in visual status. Change it into text. Change it into text, delete this and paste your event snippet code. So it is added in the back end of the website. It won't be visible for the users. If you put it on the visual section, it will be visible. You need to add it on the text yes. block, right? So select the text, put the code and update the page. So as the user enters the thank you page, the last page, he is tracked because of the presence of this event snippet code. That is how you are going to add your event snippet code on the page level. Let us say your website is in some other technology. It is not WordPress. Then you are going to send this code to the designer and the designer has to add it on the final conversion page. If it is WordPress, you know how to add it. So let me repeat what we have discussed so far. Go to tools and settings, get into measurement, go to conversions. Under conversions, you'll have an option of creating a conversion action. Click on that. It will ask you, what do you want to track? You can select website. And after that, you will select what is the goal? Why are you creating this conversion action? Let us say I want to create 10 conversion actions for my website. I can go ahead and create 10 conversion action. Global site tag will be common for everything actually. Once if you do that, it will be sufficient. But event snippet codes will be different. So those codes you will copy and put it on the last page of those transactions. For example, I want to track page, uh, let us say contact form. I want to track sales. I want to track calls. So I can do multiple conversion actions for the same website. You'll give a name for the conversion action. This is for your reference, how to identify that. Then if you want to give a value for conversion, you can give it. Otherwise, you need not use a value. And then what should be the count? Is it every or one? If it is every, each conversion will be considered as a single conversion. Even if the user enters your website and makes four or five purchases, you are going to pay to Google four or four, five times. If it is one, even if the user makes four purchases, you will be paying only once to the Google because it will be considered as one conversion. Then how long should the cookie be active? If they are coming from search ad, you can keep it active anywhere between one to 90 days. If it is video ad or display ad, you can keep the cookie active from one day to 30 days. And then click on create and continue. This was old method. We had three methods like search console, but now it has been changed. We are getting this window. 
What is that window? Just click on done. After creating conversion action, you will just get an option of taking your global site tag and even snippet code. This was an old process. Whatever it is, if you continue, you'll get this. This is the global site tag and this is the event snippet code. Global site tag should be added on the website level on the header or footer of your website by using the plugin called insert header and footer, which I already discussed. Let us say if the website belongs to any other technology, you're going to send both these codes to the designer and designer has to add one code that is global site tag on the website level and another code that is event snippet code on the page level. If you are doing it on WordPress, you will select this event snippet code, go to the particular page, add the code on the text block. After adding the widget and dragging and dropping the text block, select text option and put your code here and update the page. Insert and header and footer, this is the process which you already know. And now, once you are created with your conversion action, you can see all your conversion actions here on your summary page. How many conversion actions you have created? Right now, I have created only one. And this is for apps, actually. So you can see all the list of conversions actions that you have done and how it is performing and all you can see here. Now, let us say a user entered my website. What happens? We already know this. Because of global site tag, one cookie is installed. As long as he moves in any other page, only one cookie is present on his browser. The minute he completes the transaction, he'll get to the thank you page and a second cookie is installed. Now you can see two cookies overlapping with each other. With that, we can understand that one transaction is completed, one conversion has happened. So that is how you will do conversion tracking. Am I clear, my everyone? Online people, am I clear? Yes, ma'am. Right. So the next thing that we have got is app promotion. Same concept. Tracking the app installations. How do you do that? If you get into the same conversion action and this time instead of website, what are we tracking? We are tracking app. The minute we select the app tracking, it will ask you where do you want the tracking to happen? Do you want to track the app installations from Google Analytics or you want to track from Google Play Store? Or if your client is using any third party app, you can connect that also. Usually we will connect it with Google Play Store. And what do you want to track? You have two methods. Either you can track installations of the app or if the app is already in use in your account, you can track the in-app purchases. If people are doing any purchases inside the app, you can track that as well. Let, let me track the installations. I can continue and it will ask me, to connect my app, your app must be present in the Google Play Store to connect it. So your client must have the app and that app must be present on the Google Play Store. So for example, let us say I have True Caller or Daily Hunt, which I have searched in the past. So probably I'll select Daily Hunt. So for this, I'm creating a conversion action. What does it mean? How many members are installing Daily Hunt? I want to track that. That's it. So if you want to use a value for this, you can use a value or don't use a value for it. You cannot use it. As usual, the lifetime of the cookie of the installation, if it is a search ad, one week to 30 days. If it is a video ad, one to three days. If it is a display ad, only one day. So that is the tracking that can happen on app installations and you can click on create and continue. The tracking code is created for that and that has to be connected to your app. That's it. To your campaign, I'll show you now. This is a conversion action that I have already created. One for some installation, another for another installation. Two codes I already created. Now, if I want to create a campaign, how to do that? How will you create campaigns? Work? Get into the home page of your dashboard, create a new campaign. And this time, what am I doing? I can either track sales, traffic, but this time it is app promotion because I'm looking at tracking how many installations have happened on my app. Select app promotion. 
and it will ask you what do you want to track. Do you want to track installations or do you want to track any engagement that is any in-app purchases, etc. I did not create any tracking code for in-app purchases. So I'm doing only for app installation. I select that. If I create in-app purchases code, I can do that also. I can track my existing customers purchase value. But for that, there must be minimum 250k installations for the app already. Then only you can target this in-app purchases. Otherwise, you can target on installations. So I have selected app installations. Where is your mobile app? Search for the app. Let me select daily hunt. And the minute I select the daily hunt app, I am ready to create the campaign. Start new. All these options you already know. Mobile app is already connected because it is already selected and the code is created for it. Location targeting options you know very clearly. Now you see here a small warning. Your ads will be shown only in the countries where your app installation is available for download. Your app must be working in that country. Otherwise, it is not allowed. Normal options. Language. Under more settings, you'll have start date and end date of your campaign. Don't forget to mention the end date. Otherwise, you will lose your money if you are connecting with a credit card. So I'm doing it for three days. Under more settings, nothing else is required. Your ad must be visible wherever there is a possibility. What is the average daily budget that you want to spend? I'm spending some thousand rupees and what am I targeting? Installation, isn't it? Install volume is what I'm targeting. If I'm doing it for any other things like in-app purchase, etc., these things will be available. And then by default, whatever is the tracking code that I created, it will be connected. Got it? Because I selected daily hunt, I'm connecting that code. If I select true caller here, It is not allowing me to change it. Let me select the other one and show you. Just to show you that it automatically connects. This time I am selecting true caller. The minute you select the app, the conversion tracking which is av available for that, that will be connected to your campaign. The app is connected. Location targeting option as usual. Under more settings, start date and end date. some budget for a day, app installation is my focus and see what is the conversion action connected? It is another action. In the previous one, it was connected with another conversion action. So for whichever app, whatever conversion tracking you are creating, that will be automatically connected. And you are targeting all users, isn't it? You have to target all users. If it is in-app purchases, you will track only the people who are already using your app. You will have it here. Users likely to perform an in-app action. That is not available for us because we are promoting installation. We want to target all users. And select the CPI, which is cost per installation. Your budget is too low. All right, so I have given 1000 rupees per day and I have given 10 rupees per installation. That is what I'm expecting. So probably I can get 15.4K installations by spending 7000 rupees for a week. And I'm ready to go live. If I click on next, the next will be ad group creation. Ad creation. And this is how the users are going to see the icon of my app and they'll get an install button. I can add my headlines, I can add images, description, we know all this process. So how to add headlines, how to add descriptions and under advanced option, this is not necessary for us. You can add your call to action button, which is by default install. Now. So people will get this call to action button and if they click on that install, they'll be redirected to the Google Play Store and from there they can install the app and you can track the number of installations that are happening on your Google Ads report.
Got it, guys? That's what it is. App promotion campaign. And for this, what you're going to do? You will create a download conversion action. That is app installation conversion action. Where do you create it? Same path, tools and settings, under measurement, get into conversions. Under conversions, select new conversion action and get into mobile apps instead of website. And under the apps, you can select either Google Analytics or you can select Google Play Store. Usually we'll do it for Google Play Store. Continue, give a name for the conversion. Select the mobile app for which you are creating the conversion tracking. Remember that this app must be present on the Play Store first. And then if you want, give a value for this conversion or don't give a value for it. And then keep the lifetime of the cookie. Select it and then create and continue. The conversion action can be found under download section. And then how to create promotion campaign, app promotion campaign. Get into your campaign crea creation spot. Click on new campaign. Select app promotion and go for app installations. If at all you want app engagement, you need to have minimum 250K installations already. And then you can choose where your mobile app is present. Search for your app. Select your app. Give a name for the campaign. Location targeting option common. Language, let it be by default English. Give a daily budget as per your client's requirement. And then installation volume is what we are tracking. And by default, whatever tracking conversion action you created, that will be connected to your campaign. And you will be promoting it for all users and you will give a cost per installation. And then you will give a start date and end date and you can click on save and continue. If you already did not create the conversion action, you will get an error message like this. Here, when we were creating a conversion action, when we were connecting like this, if this conversion action is already not created, here instead of this, we'll get a red color button saying add a conversion action. If you click on that, where will you go? Again, you'll go to the tools and settings, manage measurement and conversions page. And there you have to create the conversion action. And then once you are done, you can run the campaign and it will go live. That's about our promotion campaign. Any questions, guys, online people? Guys, yes, no, maybe something. No, All right. No, ma'am. Hare Krishna, Anusha, are you clear, ma'am? Uh, yes, ma'am. Both conversion tracking and app promotion campaigns. Uh, yes, ma'am. Right. What about the classroom, guys? So a quick recap of what did we study so far because building strategies I'm not going to start today. I want it to be on a fresh day. So, so far you have learned about such campaigns. You know all the options. Under such campaigns, you have learned about location targeting, radius based, everything and also extensions. Different type of extensions that you can create. And then we have seen display ad campaign. Under display ad, we have seen responsive ad campaigning. And under responsive ads, or manual ads, you have seen all the targeting options, audience targeting. Targeting based on demographics, based on affinity, based on their usage, etc. And then we have seen video ads. Under video ads, again, we have seen multiple things like skippable in stream, non skippable in stream. We have seen bumper ads and we have seen in ad feed ad. Yeah, ad sequence and we have seen in feed ads. So you have gone through all these things and we have seen shopping ads for which we need to create merchant center account and how to create merchant center account, how to add products and all we have discussed and how to create shopping ads we have discussed. And after that, we have app promotion campaign. This is the last type of ad that we are discussing. Today we did it. So for app promotion campaign, what do you need to do? You need to create a conversion action and then you need to connect that conversion action to your campaign for your respective app installation tracking. And apart from that, we have learned remarketing, that is targeting the customers after they visit our website. We'll do it with the help of GST, that is global site tag or remarketing code. And similarly, today we have studied conversion tracking, which can be done with two codes, 
one is global site tag another one is event snippet code so with this we come to the end of all the topics of ads creation all right the next thing that we have is bidding strategies which i'll discuss in tomorrow's class probably it will take one and a half class actually bidding strategies so tomorrow and half day of the after tomorrow and after bidding strategies i'll tell you small concepts are left out like how to add negative keywords how to you know uh, edit the campaign setting options all this normal stuff and finally you will see reports and the three classes for google ads all right people so please go through till today's class we are done actually we are just 20 minutes ahead good please go through the class today and in tomorrow's session we will discuss about bidding strategies if you have any questions or any of these things you can ask me now. any questions so far guys no madam fine ma then i'll see you all tomorrow guys bye everyone online people Bye, guys. Bye, madam. Bye, ma'am. Bye, ma'am.